Centuries ago, during the reign of the Mahendra Pallava Emperor at Kanchi, he had arranged for the reading of the Mahabharata across the country. He made that arrangement so that the heroic sentiment should spread again in Tamil Nadu, where the people had become martyrs due to the propaganda of Buddhist Jainism. He built Bharat Mandapams in many towns to study the story of Bharat. The arrangement he had started was still going unhindered in the throat area. At night, people gathered in Mandapams or open spaces and listened to stories about Bharat. Many singers appeared who could tell the great story of Bharat and the branch stories of Bharat in bottles, pans, and verses with vehemence. While Arjuna was on a pilgrimage to Manipuri, he saw Chitrangi, a Manipuri princess, in a forest near Manipuri. Both fell in love. A beautiful son named Aravan was born to Chitrangi. Aravan was a great warrior because he was the son born to Arjuna to the mountain tribes. He also came to join the Pandava army knowing that the Bharata war was about to take place. Before the start of the war, when a young man of great valor, who matched all the ideals, was to be offered as a sacrifice, he said, Here I am, give me as a sacrifice. Aravan came forward. As there was no better warrior than him on the side of the Pandavas, Aravan himself had to be sacrificed. The story of Veera Aravan who sacrificed his life for the victory of his party, stole the hearts of the Tamil people. Wherever they built a temple for goddess Durapad, they also built a temple for Aravan next to it and held a festival. The story of Aravan that night near the five chariots of Mamala Purat seemed to have come to an end. Long live the Sundara Chola Emperor of the Three Worlds. Long live Gopareksari Aditha Kari Kalar. The slogans raised by many voices floated in the air. People who were listening to the story got up and started to disperse. The story is over. Malay Aman will be back in a moment, said Kari Gallan. Aravan's story is over, but the story you have been telling is not over yet. Parthiban said. Look at the mood of Malay Aman in this prayer. He is still awake and listening to the story until midnight. Said Kari Gallan. Is it such a wonderful thing to be alive until the end of charity? There are so many old people in the town. They are going to listen to stories without getting sleep at night. Do you put Thiruko Valar Malajadeyar with such ordinary old men? How many battlefields has he seen? I doubt if we will live to the age of Malay Aman. However, we will not be as strong as him. King. There's a reason the ancients were so strong. What's the reason for that? They don't get caught in the infatuation of women. Kavalam doesn't give his heart to a priest's daughter and melts thinking about her. If any girl like that, they will drag her by the hair and leave her in that temple and look for another job. Pardipa. Nandini is not really a priestess, there must be some mystery about her birth. What if Nandini is whose daughter? What if she is the daughter of a priest? What if she is the daughter of a king? Or what if she is an orphan? Look at that other old man, the great farmer. He saw her somewhere on the way, he immediately dragged her and locked her in the eight and nine. Dude. It's amazing to me to think about it. What do you think? How did that old man fall into her trap? No, no. She who once said she loved me, then fell in love with Veerapandian and tried to save his life. How could she agree to marry this charitable old man? It's amazing to think about it. In the middle of it came a whistling sound from inside the hut. Who is that? I asked. Someone is the women of our cocker's family. They are already panicking and panicking. None of you should go in. You said. We, who were in a frenzy of victory, did not care. Immediately we all left with Veerapandian's head. You also came with us. But you did not participate in our fun and celebration. You looked depressed. I asked the reason. You said something reassuring. I even remember now that I wondered if they had been seriously hurt, said Parthipendra. Some are women of priestly family. They are already panicking and panicking. None of you should go in. You said. We, who were in a frenzy of victory, did not care. Immediately we all left with Veerapandian's head. You also came with us. 
but you did not participate in our fun and celebration. You looked depressed. I asked the reason. You said something reassuring. I even remember now that I wondered if they had been seriously hurt, said Parthipendra. Some are women of priestly family. They are already panicking and panicking. None of you should go in. You said. We, who were in a frenzy of victory, did not care. Immediately we all left with Veerapandian's head. You also came with us. But you did not participate in our fun and celebration. You looked depressed. I asked the reason. You said something reassuring. I even remember now that I wondered if they had been seriously hurt, said Parthipendra. Immediately we all took Veerapandi's head and left, you also came with us. But they did not participate so much in our fun and celebration. You looked downhearted. I asked the reason. You said something reassuring. I even remember now that I wondered if they had sustained any serious injury. Parthipendran said. Immediately we all took Veerapandi's head and left, you also came with us. But they did not participate so much in our fun and celebration. You looked downhearted. I asked the reason. You said something reassuring. I even remember now that I wondered if they had sustained any serious injury. Parthipendran said. Do we have the power to bring back the departed spirit? Has anyone born into a royal family had it? We can only buy life, but no one born as humans has the power to give life. It would be better not to. If they had that power, how much wrong would have gone wrong? You would have given Pandian back to life. He would be hiding somewhere in the mountains again. The Pandian war might still be going on. So much for a woman's false tears said Parthipendra. Pallava. You are a bastard who hates women. You don't know what love is. That's why you talk like this. Yes, I have never caught any woman's eye. But their intimate friend, Vandiyadeva, snarls at whatever yellow face he sees. That's why they like him better than me. Don't you, King? Aha! You have finally come to Vandiyathevan, haven't you? What, I saw that you had forgotten him all this time. Yes, it would be bitter for them to tell the truth about him. I will leave that talk. What happened then, my lord? Did you never meet Nandini again? Did you never ask her how Eurakina got married to the old Pavatarayar for Vera Pandayan? I saw that all the huts there were burnt to ashes. An old man and an old woman were sitting beside the burnt hut and lamenting. A closer look revealed that they were the ones who had brought Nandini to the old palace garden the previous time. When they saw me, their grief and panic multiplied. At first they couldn't say anything. Little by little I encouraged them and inquired. Their eldest daughter was in the village on the bank of the river. They had come to see her knowing that she was about to give birth. Nandini refuses to come with them. Unable to do anything about that stubborn woman who was used to going wild, they left and came back. On the way they saw some miscreants trying to force a woman on the burning wreck by tying her hands and feet. Thinking that such tragedies are normal during wartime, they were afraid to go near them and quickly arrived here. When you come, you will see that the huts are burnt. Nandini is also missing. After telling this story, the priest and his wife, Prince. Where is our daughter? Where is our beautiful Kumari? They shouted. I already knew that they were not Nandini's real parents. Now it is all certain. If they really got it, would they have left it alone like this? Therefore I have neither mercy nor sympathy for them. An unspeakable grief over Nandini's fate filled the heart. Go find your daughter's charred remains and burn yourself to death. Cursing them to get rid of the stomachache, I returned and reached Pisara before dawn. You were all sleeping well. None of you knows that I have gone and come back. I already knew that they were not Nandini's real parents. Now it is all certain. If they really got it, would they have left it alone like this? Therefore I have neither mercy nor sympathy for them. An unspeakable grief over Nandini's fate filled the heart. Go find your daughter's charred remains and burn yourself to death. 
cursing them to get rid of the stomachache, I returned and reached Pasara before dawn. You were all sleeping well. None of you knows that I have gone and come back. I already knew that they were not Nandini's real parents. Now it is all certain. If they really got it, would they have left it alone like this? Therefore I have neither mercy nor sympathy for them. An unspeakable grief over Nandini's fate filled the heart. Go find your daughter's charred remains and burn yourself to death. Cursing them to get rid of the stomachache, I returned and reached Pasara before dawn. You were all sleeping well. None of you knows that I have gone and come back. If they really got it, would they have left it alone like this? Therefore I have neither mercy nor sympathy for them. An unspeakable grief over Nandini's fate filled the heart. Go find your daughter's charred remains and burn yourself to death. Cursing them to get rid of the stomachache, I returned and reached Pasara before dawn. You were all sleeping well. None of you knows that I have gone and come back. If they really got it, would they have left it alone like this? Therefore I have neither mercy nor sympathy for them. An unspeakable grief over Nandini's fate filled the heart. Go find your daughter's charred remains and burn yourself to death. Cursing them to get rid of the stomachache, I returned and reached Pasara before dawn. You were all sleeping well. None of you knows that I have gone and come back. You were all sleeping well. None of you knows that I have gone and come back. You were all sleeping well. None of you knows that I have gone and come back. Yes, Prince. I don't know. It's amazing to think that they kept all this in their minds for so long. I never dreamed that you would behave so contrary to the virtue of friendship. If I were in their position, I would not have told them, said Partipan. But you are not in my position, Parthiba. No one in this world could have been in my position. Who can say how you would have behaved if you had been in my position? Said Carrie Gallen. My king. Let us not discuss what happened now. What happened then? When did you see Nandini after that? After Pavuver became Ile Yerani? Before that. All the generals agreed and cheered. I had completely forgotten about Nandini in this commotion. But shortly after the christening ceremony, an incident happened to her that I will never forget. How did she get inside that palace gate? How does she stand there as the central queen among queens with such magnificent costumes? What is Mantekazam on her face? How come her beauty is ten times more than before? Within a few moments, my soul had built several celestial castles. Was the day I was crowned as the Chola Empire really going to be the luckiest day of my life? Am I going to reach the queen who captivated my soul and my title Mahishi? Is something like this going to happen because of some miraculous Indranet, magical power? While I was thinking like this, my mother Vanamadavi walked two steps in front of me and said, Child. She blessed me saying that. At the same time, an unexpected incident happened. My father said ah. He cried out and suddenly collapsed on the floor and fainted. Immediately, there was chaos in the place. I and everyone else concentrated on getting the emperor to sit up and induce fainting. Except for my mother and grandmother Sembian Mathavi, all the other mothers had gone inside. The father soon fainted. I took my sister Kundave to a separate place and asked, How did Nandini get there? I asked. Kundave told me that Nandini married the great Pavu Vatarayar and now she is the Isla Irani of Palvur. A sharp spear pierced my chest. Friend. I have been wounded many times in the battlefields. But because Kundave said, Nandini is the Isla Yerani of Palvur, the wound in my chest has not healed yet. Aditha Karikalan said and clutched his chest. It was clear that he still had pain in his chest. 